The history of the mojito is shrouded in mystery. It turns out to be quite difficult to track down the history of a specific drink, but most people telling the story about the drink have actually had one too many mojitos themselves. But let's look into the history of such an infamous drink, shall we? Sir Francis Drake was a ca sea captain, mercenary, explorer, slave trader, and employee of Queen Elizabeth I. In 1586, he dropped anchor off the shore of Havana. Havana, at the time still a Spanish colony, went into full siege mode. The army prepared for war, and the city was on lockdown for seven days. And then everyone was surprised when several days later, Captain Drake just sailed his ship right out of the port with only a few cannon shots fired. He left without warning. And it's still not clear to this day as to why Drake left, but the common belief is that his men were just too ill to fight. They encountered some kind of ski survey and just that he wasn't able to do anything. And then the second part of the story comes into play, and it's how Sir Captain Drake saved his men. The honorable slave trader put aside the war, put aside the golds he could have stolen from the Spanish and concocted a drink for his men. A mixture of lime, sugar, mint, and augmente. Now, I've butchered the pronunciation, and I'm sorry for that, but augmente is a rudimentary Spanish liqueur, a very, very distant cousin to white rum. I think you can see where I'm going with this. So, L. Drake invented a drink, which was called the L. Drake. I hope you didn't expect a English pirate from the 15th century to be subtle, um, but yeah, that was the drink he invented to save his men's life. Now, where does the mojito come into this? Well, if you want to make a mojito, you need to do what Don Facindo, Bacardi, and Masso did when he was founding the Bacardi Company. Again, I apologize for another butchered pronunciation, but he simply took the drink that was the El Drake and swapped out the Ardamente for a Bacardi white rum. There's no famous bartender story behind it, because as you'll find, um, a lot of drinks just get made because this company was running a promotion and the bartenders were like, had to use that spirit. And that's how the mojito came into production as this drink we know today. How do you actually make a mojito? In my time bartending, this is gonna be one of the most contentious drinks I've ever had to make. There are two schools of thought. There are your muddlers and twizzlers and there are your shakers. Now, I'll explain very briefly what that means. So, some bartenders believe that you need to put your lime, mint and sugar into the glass, muddle it down, and then build the ice and rum on top, and then you have a mojito. Whereas some choose to believe that you should do it in a shaker, do not include the white, r white rum, shake the lime, mint and sugar together, and then add your rum in afterwards. Now, both work. I opt for the more controversial option of the pair, and I choose to shake my mojitos, because I'm under the school of thought that if you don't shake a citrus well enough, it will begin to separate in the drink, and by the time you're halfway through your drink, the drink's gonna be less palatable. So, if we're gonna shake our mojito, here's how you do it. You take your small shaker, you need to get four freshly cut lime wedges, three, four, and then you want about six to eight mint leaves. You, of course, dealer's choice, but um, whatever works for you. You can either tear them in half slightly or activate them to release the essential oils. Up next, you need some sugar. I'm going to be using two bar spoons of brown sugar or one heaped bar spoon because one bar spoon is five mils. So you heap it, you have 10 mils. And then I'll be using just a dash of simple syrup to kind of get a little bit more liquid in there to juicify the whole thing. Up next, we're gonna muddle it. Now, when you're muddling, you need to be careful because we need to be harsh enough to squash the limes, but soft enough not to um, damage the stems of the mint to release any bitter flavors from it. So we're gonna do something called a rolling muddle. So, squeeze down, roll your fist out, and you roll your muddler around like this. And what this is doing, it is pulverizing the limes on the inside while hopefully not damaging the mint too much to cause any unwanted bitterness in the drink. Now, after between five to 10 muddles, depending on your strength and style, you should get a pulverized mixture looking like so. Once you've got your pulverized mixture and there's a fair bit of juice in the bottom, you can put your muddler aside and get the ice ready. Large shaker tin on top, slam to seal, slam both sides, and now when your ice is in, shake for between eight to 10 seconds.
crack your shaker tin make sure you've got nice frosting on the outside of your tin so that's how you know it's cold enough and then I choose to dump so you're simply gonna pour our mixture in now the reason I choose to dump my ice instead of get fresh ice is that I want the little pulverized light, uh, mint bits to be part of the drink. So, once you've got your mixture in the glass, time for your white rum. We're using today Havana, and we are opting to use 60 mils. So, measure out 60 mils of your spirit, spill a fair bit, and then pour it into the glass. Now we're almost done, and this part is mainly down to personal preference, but the Bacardi recipe that was published as the original recipe um, does opt for soda water. Now, due to the fact that when Bacardi invented the recipe, soda water wasn't wide production yet, it is a little bit difficult to know whether or not soda water was genuinely part of the original recipe, or whether it was like added in later. But because, based off the El Drake, we know that there was no soda water involved, so what I'm gonna do is add just a dash top up the drink take my spoon give it a swirl around the bottom to get that heavy lime mixture up into the drink and then i'm going to forget to get a straw ready so i'm going to go get a straw and come back <laughs> the straw ready straw in your drink a small lime wedge which i choose to do a backwards cut on so we simply dig about a centimetre into the lime, cut through, the, cut through the skin, and that one sits up there like a little boat. And then a nice healthy serving of mint in the top. Whenever you're garnishing a drink, you want to make sure that you have your straw near your garnishes so that when your face hits the drink, you're already immediately smelling the flavours of the garnish before you even taste it because of, because of how much of taste is made up by smell. So, one very messy but very green mojito. Nothing beats a freshly squeezed mojito. When you get your proper lime in there, it's top notch. You have the sharpness of the lime combining with the really kind of sweet, soft aspects of the white rum, which kind of melds into almost a licorice style of taste. And then in the back palette, you have that just really light, bright, minty softness that makes this such an iconic but wonderful drink. But one mojito, enjoy.